Welcome back to more Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, everybody. So in the last episode, we made more progress. Yes, I mean, if you couldn't already tell, that's what I was going to say as my intro, then, well, I don't know what to tell you. But yes, we're just making more solo mode progress, as obvious as that sounds. Anyway, we're going to obtain some more gems here. There we go. Okay, so now we can actually go back into solo mode and continue on with this. So I think we last left off in a tutorial. Like we did the tutorial, I mean. Yeah, this one. So we have to use a Klee deck. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. You know what? We got this. We still, we still got this. We're going to do this. I do not know much about the Klee cards. Aside from Klee Fort Scout and Apocalypse Fort Towers. That's basically it. Alright, but yeah. My goal is to get... Apocalypse Fort Towers here as soon as possible. Alright, oh, we got two Cleefort Scouts. That's actually good. I can't tell if this hand is good or not. I'm pretty sure it's good. Alright, so basically, you can normal summon this card without tributing. If it's normal summon without tributing or a special summon, its, uh, it's level becomes 4, original type becomes 18. If it's normal summon or set, it is unaffected. By activated effects from any monster who's a... Okay, got it. Now let's tribute summon. By tributing a clean monster, you can target one card in the field or spin to the hand. Okay. Um, as far as... Let's see. Because as far as the scales, I definitely want to put this one in one of them. Then I can... If I put that one there, I'm trying to think of how I would do this. I would just put any one. We're going to we're gonna go with this first, obviously. We're going to put a pendulum scale right there uh, we're gonna say no so which one do I put because this one is just a vanilla so it wouldn't really have a good effect or I mean it wouldn't have any effect you can also put this on okay wait. once per turn during the end phase if you tribute summon this turn you can draw a number of cards equal to a number of oh that's the one yeah yeah okay 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 so let's see if you tribute summon and I can basically draw one to do that or I could just bring out both which might actually be a bit of a better one, I don't know. Um, okay, we're gonna use the effect here. We're gonna pay 800. And we're going to add, should I add a towers already? I don't think I should yet. I can wait until next turn to do that. Let's just bring, because again, since I don't know how to play the deck, I actually am not totally sure on what to be doing. So we'll just do this. We're gonna activate... That's a 9, yeah, so we're gonna bring out... I think the Monolith would be the play. I think. Once we're doing the Empress, if we tribute summon, yeah, so... Well, even though we're not gonna tribute summon, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and scale up this one. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a Pendulum Summon. So this one, you can have Special Summon. Uh, once per turn, you can pay 100, add one Klee card from the deck to your hand, except Klee Fort Scout. I might want to keep that one instead. I'm going to bring these two onto the field. Let's go with that and see what happens here. Face up attack. And face up attack for both. Okay. Then we're going to set this Twin Twisters. And we're going to... Cleefort Genius. No, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're going to end the turn. Alright, let's see here. We got two 1800 attackers. Oh my god. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so this is where I need to decide something really quick. Um, all clean monsters you control gain 300 attack. Okay. Then we have that one, which is stealth. That would be the same thing. So it gets another 300 if I were to do that. Um, I'm going to have to do... Oh my god, I hated to do this, but I, I'm going to have to do it. We're going to get rid of both of these. So now we're going to crash instead, which is fine, I suppose. 
Okay. Let's see what I got here. Oh. Alright, so here... What is this? What? Oh my god, that's that busted card. That card is so broken. Wavering eyes. I know about this card. Let me read it to you. Destroys as many cards in each player's pendulum as possible and applies effects in sequence depending on the number of cards destroyed. 1 plus. Inflate fighter damage to your opponent. 2 plus. You can add one pendulum monster from your main deck to your hand. Wait a minute. So it was... Depending on the number of cards destroyed by his effect. Did you not... Wait, you did the effect, right? The second one? I wasn't actually paying attention. You can ban him on his field and you can add one wavering ice from deck to your hand. Okay. Well, I kind of ruined my plan here. I had a pretty good idea. I was going to go ahead and pendulum someone again, but... Mm, whatever. Okay, uh, so basically, yeah, because I can't really do much. You can almost summon, uh, whatever, no, it's not going to, this card is almost summoning, and it's unaffected by activated effects from any monsters. Uh, okay. When this card is tribute summon a tributing a clean monster, you can target one card filter into the hand. Uh, let's see, if this card is tributed, you can target one monster in the field. No, that wouldn't actually work. Um, I mean, I can summon it. Because this pendulum one thing just says they all gain 300 attack. Which I don't think would be useful. Um, I think I should just attack. I mean, I can tribute some of it, but it's not really going to do anything. I should probably just keep it. Man, that wavering has really messed me up. Because I was going to pendulum summon and bring one card from the freaking extra deck too. It is kind of a problem. But it, it depends if you have scales. If this guy actually can scale up. Oh boy, I'm going to be in such a big problem here. If he gets two Klee cards, I think we're okay. Huh, that's all you're doing then. Okay, give me a card. What is this? Cleefort Shell. Okay. What are the what are they? Nine and one. That can actually work. Um Let me see what this thing says. So that's if this card is normal something like shed, it's unaffected by activated effects. Okay, it's unaffected by activated effects. Got it. You have like a second attack during each. So I think I should just scale up, to be honest. I think that's I think that's the good the best move to do. We're gonna peace scale. And now we're going to peace scale again. By the way, um, that attack reduction said it's not an activated effect, which is why it's still affected by that, in case you're wondering. Anyway, now we can go ahead and do a pendulum summon here. So we can do, and I wanna see something here. Yeah, see? So it's using the master rule revisions, uh, which makes sense, I mean obviously, right? But prior to that, you could actually have brought it out as many monsters as possible from the top of the extra deck, and fine, and it's fine. But since the revisions, you can only bring out monsters to the extra monster zone, um, or if a link monster points to that specific spot. So right here, I only have one possible area, and that's the extra monster zone. So I'm going to bring out... Um, I have to quickly read... That's a vanilla, I meant this one. This card is normal summon without tribute or special summon. It all becomes four, and its original type becomes eighteen hundred. So it becomes eighteen hundred. Um, when it's tribute summoned, or should I just go for more attack? I think I'll go for more attack. Honestly, I think that just makes the most sense to do. We're gonna go with this and bring you out right there. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna enter battle here. This isn't really how I was hoping the the tool would go. <laughs> I was like, oh hell yeah, I'm gonna you know get another Cleaport Scout Surge, I'm gonna go for Apocalypse Port Towers, and then that hasn't actually worked out, but I am still doing a really good job here. So we're fine. Let's see what you do. That's it? What kind of what kind of turn was that? Well that's it, that, that's that's the game, right? Because that's twelve and yeah, that should actually be it. We're gonna enter battle here. Go down to 17, 21, final blow, and that's it. Wow. This really ended up being a very... Both sides of the deck look very weak. Like, meaning both both of us. Like, the deck is honestly a lot better than this. It just... Wow. It's like they both just bricked heavily. It's what it looked like. But obviously they didn't. That, that wavering eyes really came in clutch for you at that point. I was pretty scared at the time. Anyway... We're gonna go into this. I thought about going to Gaia, but nah, not yet. I have to. Oh my gosh, I actually have to get some. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I gotta get some good stuff. I suppose it's fine. I suppose it is fine. 
All right, blue eyes deck, come through. Hmm, this is a this is a very good hand. Wow. Okay, two phase downs. That could be a problem. No worries. I will draw. The King of D. Okay, we're gonna start a Dragon Shrine. We're going to send a Blue Eyes White Dragon. And we will send this one. Okay. We're then going to Special Summon the Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon. Okay. We're gonna use your effect. Normal led just attack, but I don't trust your back row. You could have stuff that could interact very easily. I, I don't know. So when it's normal summon, I can discard a spell or a trap. Um, I think I may want to do that. I'm going to go to normal summon you. Sure. I'm going to... I'm going to go with Mirror Force again. Let's go with that. Because I, I know I discarded in the last duel that I used Blue Eyes. Then with this one, I'm not actually sure. Because if I... I think I would do this. Actually, I know how to do this. Because White Stone of the Ancients can summon any blue eyes, right? So, yeah, okay. So, if I discard that, I can then bring out the other one. I think that's fine. We'll do it right now so we don't actually end up uh, drawing into these things next turn. Gotta add one of each. There we go. Then we're going to enter battle here. And then in the end phase, I'm going to special summon the blue eyes white dragon. Oh yeah, you can't attack, my bad. Uh, yeah, end phase. Special summon blue eyes. Well, it's not gonna be, bl uh, blue eyes, it's the, um, Dragon Spirit of White, I mean, my bad. And I can banish a back row by doing this. We're gonna say yes. There we go. Alright, your turn. Setting? Wow, really? White Star of Asians. Ooh, that's the, that's the shiny one right there. Okay, we're going to do... Special Summon you. Reveal the blue eyes. Face of attack. Enter battle. And I think I'm actually going to win in two turns. Oh, why did I attack with that one next? I think I just attack with blue eyes. There we go. We did it. That was actually insanely quickly. He didn't do anything. He didn't play any monsters. Well, I mean, well, he played one monster, but I destroyed it with the effect. All right, we got Frontline Observer. Let's go ahead and do goal now and see what kind of what kind of stuff we get here. What kind of lore? When the Nature's Sacred Tree was uprooted, the Klee Forts were activated. These machines were a group of autonomous mobile weapons you created to maintain equilibrium within the life system of the planet. When the Cleefort sends an abnormality in the life system, they will mobilize to eliminate whatever it is. This time, what they sensed was the Shadal as a threat to be removed. The Shadal forces were battered relentlessly and brought to the brink of destruction by the Cleeforts. However, things took a sudden turn for the worse when they attempted to restrain and absorb El Shadal Winda. The divine powers within her ended up freeing the vanguards of destruction that were slumbering, within the Cleefort sealed until this moment. Contact with El Shadal Winda also affected the Cleeforts. Her power, a force equal to that of God itself, was never meant to be to exist. Once the Cleeforts sensed that, they realized that there was a fatal error in the life system. They decided to eradicate all life on the planet in order to purify it, essentially resetting it. Will life prevail, or is the world destined for ruination? This is but just one part of the star's unending battle. You'll surely come to know the fate of this planet in another story. Damn. Freaking Shadals, it's all their fault. Fun fact, I actually really love playing Shadals. Like, in terms of... I guess I haven't talked too much about my favorite archetypes. Um, I should talk about some of my favorite archetypes, right? So some of my favorite archetypes... Um, in terms of the competitive ones, or that have had has some historical like competitiveness... Uh, what the hell? What is this? Oh, is there going to be... Wait, what the hell? This one actually takes you to like two different things. Unlock when chosen by... That's just going to keep going. It probably is going to keep going, huh? Maybe. 
Well, anyway, um... What was I saying? Oh my god, this was actually humongous. Damn. Alright, we're gonna see two scenarios in a row. Okay, I guess I'll talk about my favorite archetypes in a little bit, once we're actually, like, on practice of playing, because right now I gotta read Chosen by the World Legacy. The rulers of this war of the star were not human. That world was ruled by seven mechanical life forms known as the Magnites. And across the land spread their vanguard, the crawlers. These crawlers tend to swarm and destroy all human made structures in their path. They most likely like any emotions, helpless before those ruthless machines mankind had no choice but to live in hiding. Dense with thick trees, gloomy even in the daytime, a hinterland known as the Forest of the Stars. Therein lays a hidden village where humans live inconspicuously. The village was protected by a barrier that would prevent intruders from invading or even discovering it. The ritual wand, passed down through many generations, made the barrier extremely resistant and they had never broken, not once. But even so, the villagers were suffocated by their anxieties day after day, not knowing what the great threat would come knocking at their doorstep. From within the suffocating unease of the village, there were still those determined to fend off the crawlers. Orum and the Ningirsu. There was a reason they fought so desperately. It was the village priestess, as the younger sister of Ningirsu. From birth, the priestess possessed a divine power that synergizes with the ritual wand to create barriers. Whoa. That's crazy. It, it was the strongest village in history, but it was meager compared to the frightening forces that were stronger by the day. Alright. Her companions saw how hard she was trying to put on a brave face for the villagers, and wished they could lighten her burden even by a little. Mm-hmm, definitely. Orum and Ningirsu, along with the baby dragon Imduk, crossed the bear in hopes of slaying even just one crawler. One day, Ip heard from inside the forest a faint sound like that of a human voice. Orum and Ningirsu could not hear it. However, Ip proclaimed that she keeps hearing the voice. Afraid Ip would venture to the forest alone, Orum, Ningirsu, and the baby dragon Imduk are set afoot inside a hinterland. Whoa. Some of this stuff is actually really, like... Like, like, really neat. Because, I don't know, like, certain archetypes have already gotten a lot of, like, information about what specifically is the lore behind them, but others not so much, you know? But, anyway, the sun had already set, leaving only starlight to guide them. The scent of trees and soil hung in the cold air. Though her footing wasn't sure, it ventured into the forest as she was being guided. Careful not to lose sight of her, the three looked out for crawlers as they followed her. Suddenly, with an abrupt sh uh, shriek, Ib vanished before their eyes. Rushing to the place where they'd lost her sight of her, they saw Ib had fallen off a low cliff. Ib appear or it appeared Ib had been so spellbound in the direction of the voice that she hadn't noticed there was no ground before her. The three descended the cliff and were relieved to find Ib uninjured. Before their eyes, a mysterious structure appeared. If it had been there before, they would have noticed it, but as if the structure had been there for hundreds of years, it was... It was... I had never heard of that word in my life. Ensconed? Ensconced? In trees and, and, and entwined in ivy. They nervously approached the building. The wand Ib held in her hand glowed and the building started to rumble as if in response. A mighty light radiated from the building, blowing aside the trees and cloaking everything in blinding light. Even with their eyelids closed, the light pierced mercilessly through. When they finally opened their eyes, a fairy fluttered in the air before them. The fairy spoke to the startled party. I am Lee the World Chalice Fairy, a spirit that had been sealed inside the building, that released a bright light known as the World Legacy World Chalice. In previous times, it was her duty to guide mankind, but was obstructed by the Mech Knight. For many years, she had been waiting for a world hero capable of activating the World Chalice, and... That they are those world heroes. Please, lend me your strength and gather the scattered starlight and save the world from the great darkness, she spoke. Though bewildered by Lee's story, Orm and the group were moved by her earnestness and decided to lend a hand. Hearing their resolve, the fairy Lee smiled and bestowed upon them the powers of the awakened world chalice. Yeah, the World Chalice is actually one of the archetypes that has gotten the most lore even before this game came out. It's crazy how much you can go on YouTube and just see this lore of the World Chalice and it is ridiculous just how much there actually is. Anyway, we got some duels to, to do here. 
So anyway, I can talk about my favorite archetypes now. So one of my favorite competitive archetypes is actually Salomon Great. Salomon Great is so fun. Oh my god. Because like... It's cool because they're fire, but they're cybers. So like, they have all the cyber support that links basically do. You know, but then they're fire, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with fires. Which I always liked. Um... Anyway, another one that I like a lot is Shadal's. That one's really nice. Um, it's a flip of... It basically flips and fusions, which is really fun to do in my opinion. I have a bunch of normal monsters here. Link Summon Orm, the World Challenge Blade Master, and win on this turn. Summon Chosen by the World, then Link Summon Imduck. Okay. There we go. I also really like Harpies a lot. Harpies are so fun because they're wind, and wind is very, like, least represented. So it's nice that it actually has some very unique extra deck options that you can do. Alright. So we're gonna go ahead and bring out Imduck. The World Chalice Dragon. Summon another World Chalice monster this turn using Imduck. Okay, so basically the effect... The effect of Imduck is uh, during your main phase you can normal summon one World Chalice monster and you can normal summon slash that. Again, this one's per turn. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, this card points to. Wait, yeah. If this card battles an opponent's monster, this card points to. You can destroy an opponent's monster. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon one world chalice. Okay, cool. So, anyway, we're gonna summon you by using your effect to normal summon another one. Then we're gonna go here. We're gonna special summon into this one, Aurum the World Chalice, by using both. We're gonna bring Aurum. And this one, yeah, I have, I have its effect, yes. Of Imduck when it's sent to the graveyard. It wants us to get this card. And summon it. There we go. That's basically enough damage right there. 2000. And then 18. And practice is over. Okay, got that. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, time to duel here. We're gonna use the regular one, Loner. Here we go. Ooh, we got a Rota, we got a Compulsor Evacuation Device. Oh my god. Upstart Goblin. Okay, give me my thousand life points. Hell yeah. Okay, set two instead of monster. Hmm. I wonder what I should do. Okay, I definitely need to read this one. If a monster is special summoned from the extra deck, you can tribute this card. Send that monster to the graveyard. Oh, cool. You can only use each, uh, each once per turn. If this phase of normal summon slash deck card leaves a field, you can special summon two World Chalice monsters from your deck, except World Chalice. Seriously? Whoa. I, I, I mean, I don't know about World Chalice either, you know? During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Okay, so... Wow. So, if this phase of leaves a field, you can special summon two... So, whoa, so I can just do that. And go into... Well, I don't actually know how many... Like, I can't, I can't go into Imduck with it. I don't think I actually have an option to just do it by itself, unfortunately. Okay, well, I guess what I can do, because I can summon... Oh, wait, what does this one do? Target two World Chalice monsters um, in your graveyard with different names. Add them to your hand. If your Link Link monster would be destroyed by battle, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Okay. We're going to activate Rhoda. And, whoop, that's it. That's my only targets? Oh, great. Okay, we're gonna normal summon you. I guess we'll go into Imduck, sure. We're gonna use that one. All right. So, I can do this. You can normal summon a monster and then summon that. So I can summon that one. 
Then I can go into this one. Two World Chalice Monsters gains. Okay, so that's, uh, let me just make sure here. World Chalice. Oh, I see. It's Two World Chalice. Yeah, yeah. So we go, okay. That one would work because that is technically a World Chalice. We're going to summon. No, no. That, that, that wouldn't work. I think the easiest way to do this, I'm trying to think. Oh, cause I would, how would I get this shit on the field? Oh, we need to get another, no. I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna normal summon this one to get my extra normal summon. Sure. Then I can start damage, uh, no, not that one. One more challenger from your hand. Okay, now we're gonna go into Ib the World Chalice, Aurum. Aurum gains strength attack for each World Legacy monster you grab a different name. You can attribute one more talent monster that's got points to then target one of the monsters in your graveyard, but I'll summon it. And then this one, um, this linked card cannot be. Let's do a battle card effect. Your opponent cannot target this uh, this linked card with card effects. If a monster this card points to, if you can stream, you can send this card. Okay. I'm gonna actually go. For, I'm gonna go for Aurum. Let's go for Aurum. I can also use the effect of Imduck. And I can bring out... Yeah, okay, cool. We're gonna do that. We're gonna use this. We're gonna special summon... Because that would give me a third one so that I can do... I mean, I guess... Now, the, the shitty thing about this is that you don't get... I mean, I don't know if it's shitty. It would be broken if it, it let me do this, but... It has to be normal summon slash set. Um, and that when it leaves to feel like it's special summon, you know, more stuff, so. It's whatever, but. I'm trying to think of what else. Wait, so it's World Legacy. World Legacy Monster. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm trying to think of what I can do here. That's a two. I still only have basically it would be those. So that wouldn't actually work, I don't think. Um. I guess that's fine. Target one World Chalice Monster this card when does target one other monster from your grip a special summon it to your zone discard points to. So if I use the effect, I can then bring another one. I can bring a World Chalice there. I think that's what I'm probably going to want to do. Because I don't see how that card's going to give me any, like, direct benefit, you know? I guess. Okay. We're gonna enter battle here and see what we can do. Okay, I gotta tag with the right one. That's, is that an effect? Oh my freaking god, dude. Flip. You can target one monster on the field, destroy that monster. This felt oh, great. Uh, you can switch on two crawler monsters with different names in your deck. Okay. So, it's not gonna use the other effect because it's not a card effect. These are crawler cards. Wow. Uh, so the optional effect of this one is that if it's sent for the field to get a special in one world chalice monster from your hand. Um, I, I guess. We'll do that. We will attack for 18. What is this? 2,000? Oh, great. Okay, so that's going to destroy a monster. Um, do I, do I want to do that? Because you're just going to pop the card again. I'd rather get some kind of, like, recursion, some built-in recursion if I can. But I am also running out of cards in the hand already. I'm going to say no to that. What is this card? Pay 2,000 life points, trade monster here, so I'm target. Oh, I see. Alright, well let's go into main phase 2 here and see what we can do, because I can go into... This is actually pretty tough, because I'm kind of running out of options already. I can do this. The problem is it's, it's all once per turn stuff, so it's not going to work. This linked card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Your opponent cannot target this linked card with the card effects. You cannot target. But... But it has to be linked. Um... Yeah, I don't really have too many good options here. I'm talking about a monster you're gonna special summon it. I would have to use both for that. And if I use the other one, that also wouldn't really work. 
I'm kind of in trouble here, but I think one thing I can do that may work is I can set this I can bring back those other two we're getting the turn here this is actually kind of tough to know what I should actually do here um, I thought about compulsing it but I don't know if it's worth it to be honest um, who are you targeting? that one? yeah that's that's fine I can return my own to the hand, but I don't think that's going to really be worth it. I'm going to let this slide. Why did you attack with... Okay. Oh, because he had fierce. Got it, got it. Or something. He had something. I, I don't know crawlers well either. So many new archetypes, newer archetypes that most of the older you know, player base doesn't really know too well. I don't know what this card does. Uh, this card is no more special. You can add one World Chalice monster from your deck to your hand. This card is in your graveyard. You can send one monster from your hand or field to the graveyard. Add this card to your hand. Okay, so it's normal or special. So I think what I can do here... Uh, if you different names, add them to your hand. Okay, we're going to activate this. I definitely want to bring this one and I want to bring should I just oh, they have to be different names I would have to I don't think I want the extra X that's actually gonna be a waste oh wait what oh you have to do them separately I see we're gonna go with this one okay back into the hand let's see if I can do something here we're gonna go to normal summon you we're then going to go into Imduct again. Let's see if this play can actually work out well this time. Alright, summon Imduck. Let me just read this really quick about something. This monster. At the start, damage step. Okay. So you can just destroy it. If this card is sent from the field to get a special summon. Okay, got it. So I can get another normal summon. I can go for this one. To add a real chalice monster. We're gonna use the effect. And we're gonna get no, we're gonna say no. Hmm, what should I actually get here? I actually don't know what would be the best thing to do here. When a card effect is like the target's filling monster, you can send this card from your hand or put two given again and destroy it. You can manage this card to the graveyard. We're gonna go with this. It's a bit of a hand trap there. Okay. Now we can go into Well shit. Okay. We're gonna go into I think this one. Sure. Okay, we're gonna summon you. To be honest, I don't know if it's gonna work. Uh, we are gonna do this. We shall special. Actually, one thing I can do. No, no, no. That, that, that actually wouldn't work. I, that would not work if I wanted to. Unfortunately, you know? Okay, then here. Um, I need to see this. If this card is in your grip, you can send one monster from your hand or field to grip Add this card to your hand. And then this one. Uh, the graveyard effect is during your main phase. Except, uh, you give an edge card from your graveyard. Add one world legacy card from your deck to your hand. Okay. We'll do that. And we should have done that in main phase too. But okay, this is what I wanted to see here because, all right, world legacy discovery. All World Chalice Monsters in the field gain 300 to that once per turn. If a face-up World Chalice Monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can target one World Chalice Monster in your graveyard a special summon in defense position. So this is what I wanted to see if we had a field spell going, and we do, so that's good that we have that. Okay, um... As far as what else I can potentially do... 
I don't I don't really know to be honest. We're gonna have to enter battle here and see. I think the better move. Like control the answer monster. That's cross sword beetle. Um I'm gonna go oh my god. It's a tough call, but I'm gonna go for this one. You have another one. Oh my god. Well... Uh, if you're Link Monster with a Star Battle, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. I'm gonna have to do this. Holy shit. This is really bad. He just has every fucking battle trap, man. I, just, I, I don't... I'm waiting for that Compulse for a freaking extra deck blade. That would be the ultimate nightmare for you, but... Let's see what you actually do, you know? And as a quick reminder, I also have this, which gives me protection. It targets your linked monster. Oh wait, it's your linked though. Okay, well... Let's see what you do. Okay, here comes a massive thinking. Oh my god. Upstar Goblin. I'll give my thousand, sure. Isn't this so stupid, people? Like, I'll probably just fast forwarding this. Holy crap. Holy crap. This has been like 40 seconds. You've got to be kidding me. I hate this game. Oh my god. Now he's gonna do it again. He's gonna wait another 40 seconds for the next play. God damn. You're actually not attacking. Okay, well... Not totally. Okay, he's finally out of back row, so I can finally do something this turn, hopefully. Another World Chalice Fairy. Um, actually, I don't know if I can, because... Well, no, I, I can go into... Yeah, I can go to another play. I can summon you, I think. Go into a search. I think I'm going to want to go for... I'm going to go for... This one. Mix it up a little bit with stuff. Okay. Then we can do, I think we can go into this two monsters with different types of attributes. Two world chalice monsters. Uh, I can go with that to get another one of that same card going. I suppose that can work maybe. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Really have to see something here. What the hell? Freaking cursor. What? No, I'm trying to... Oh, okay. This one is just side arrows, though. It's not really going to give me any benefit. Whatever. Okay, so we got two options to summon here. I'm going to put you right there, I guess. Sure. That's fine. And then here... Not a whole lot more. I have this one, which is just adding it. You guess I'm up. No, we're not gonna do that. We can tag that out for next turn if we actually wanted to do it. We could, but I think that's actually all we can do. We just have to start attacking your stuff here. Um, so here's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna set you back a whole turn because I know that. Oh my god! Sorry about the sirens in the background. They're really loud again. I can set you back a whole turn, because what I can do is basically this. I know that as a crawler, you want me to interact with your face down flip stuff. So if we do that, I think we're actually in a good position because it sets you back a whole turn to get a good effect going. Next turn when I attack, sure, I'll have to go through one of those probably, but that's okay. Like, I think it's actually fine. Okay, and phase, yeah, see, that's easy. That's easy to deal with, that's much easier. Mind control. Okay, that's. Uh, I think that's actually going to be it. That's 52. 
two plus. This says target one monster opponent controls until the end phase to control that target, but it can yeah, that's game, because that's fifty-two plus the nineteen. I'll just take it. Can't really do much with that, but that's okay. We'll enter battle and we'll swing in for all this, and that's actually going to be the game right there. Alright. Perfect timing because I actually just reached um, 40 minutes. Like, wow. Just reached that. That was a crazy duel, but it's it's fun that it actually was not a mirror match for once. It made it a little more, a little better, you know, not that stale mirror match that we've been doing the whole solo mode. Alright, so there's going to be two ways to go a locked thing up there or this way. Hmm. There's two locked sections there, too. That's crazy. Alright, so before I end this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you enjoyed the video. I will see you all later. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day.